So I'm Ludmila Malkova. I work at Microsoft. I'm a new member of Open Telemetry Technical Committee. I'm a maintainer of Open Telemetry Semantic Conventions. So, and here today I'm going to share how we use Open Telemetry uh, in our Azure SDKs to make them better. Um, so when we think about observability, we tend to think about it as something intended for users, for somebody who works on the application um, or for somebody who runs it, but effectively they decide which backend to use, they decide how to configure it, they can add data, they can remove data, it's their application. But what about library owners? Do we have any observability? Um, do we know what happens to our libraries after we release them? We don't collect telemetry for ourselves. I mean, there are privacy concerns, we need consent, with enormous volume of data, and no, we, we don't, we don't know. And do we know if it works at all? Like, I mean, does it do the intended thing? Maybe, sometimes. Um, right, so we do have some observability, but our observability is quite different. Our observability tools are GitHub issues or maybe some bug tracker system. We do live debugging sessions with our users. We have logs. We have re ask users to for the reprops. And when the issue happens, I mean, we we want impossible, right? We want detailed telemetry because we don't want to do back and forth. We want everything. We want it to be on. Okay, we want it to be on by default because we don't want you to reproduce issues, um, right? So they should, things should work right away. Um, so okay, it's every telemetry possible. It's always on, it costs you nothing. It does not affect performance. And <laughs> the main thing we want to, is to access it on behalf of you, right? Um, so I guess we're out of luck. There is no hope for us, right? We, we cannot get it. Uh, well, yes and no. So one thing we can do, we, we are the users of our libraries, right? We develop them, we test them, we test them in all different ways. So we can be the users who collect this feedback, right? We can be the users who decide how to collect telemetry. And we could be the users who know how to analyze this data. So let me give you some examples. Uh, so there is no better time for observability than development time. Right? I'm still in the context. I still uh, know what, my, what the code is supposed to do. Right? I didn't forget it yet. It, I know the setup. I control it. I can change things. Um, and so let's see. Well, you probably don't see it, but anyway. So what you're looking at is a very complicated trace. There are like 90 spans. And um, this is a part of a complex operation. This operation downloads multiple layers of image from the container registry. And there are a bunch of things that are going on at the same time. There is authentication, there is uh, there's multiple layers, and there is chunking. And it kind of looks repetitive. I'm not sure if you see it. But what I see is a groups of spans. Uh, some of them return for a one. Um, and like if I'm a developer who works on this library, I will, I really want to see what you see. Okay, do you see red, red things? Right? Yeah? yeah, awesome. So errors, right? That, these are four ones. There are like four of them. And they are on every chunk I'm downloading. So if I'm a developer, I, I am on this library. I like, why? Like, why do, if it wasn't part of normal authentication flow, couldn't I reuse the token on the second chunk? It should have worked if it worked the first time, right? So I can go and optimize. And then there are actually groups of redirects and I can start raising questions. Do I need redirect on every chunk? Can I optimize it? Maybe yes, maybe no, but effectively I know um, that uh, there is something in the uh, library I don't really like. And somebody can tell you, okay, I can use logs, right? 
there is the same information, oh sorry, there's the same information as you saw on the trace, it's just in logs and yeah, well, I mean you can, but this or this, you decide. Okay, so another example, uh, there is a much easier API, it just downloads something and it has two, re two HTTP requests underneath. First one, it downloads everything, the second one has an error, it returns 416 and then out of range. So I downloaded everything and then I made another request to like verify, okay, this is the end of stream. Um, again, as a developer who works on this library, I'm like why do I do this extra request? Can I avoid it? it? In this particular case, it would cut this operation. It would be twi twice of improvement. In, in this particular case, the API I'm using is intended for the cases when somebody can keep uploading stuff. So I might not know uh, when I've done the first request if it's the end of it. But as a user looking at it, I can decide, oh, okay, why does it happen? Um, I can go and read documentation and documentation will tell me, oh, you probably should use different API if, if you can, the easier one. Um, as a, owner of this library can go and document stuff. I can say, okay, this API, it's, it's, it's specific. Don't use it for simple download stuff. Um, okay, so the point here is that even though if you think about library as, uh, as a thin wrapper, in fact, it does a bunch of interesting things under the hood. And they are under the hood even for the library developers. It's part of some core logic and you might configure your retry policy and uh, authentication policy in different orders. But effectively, um, the things that are happen under the hood is, yeah, there are retries, there is content buffering, chunking, whatnot, some caching and uh, connection management. Um, so it is complicated. Uh, and now we come to an interesting uh, problem where observability really shines, the integration testing. So we tend to think about integration tests as something inherently flaky. And I'm like, oh, okay, it failed again, let me restart the test. But why? I hear some, something is talking. Oh, oh, I see, sorry. Uh, okay, anyway, so we tend to think about integration tests as something that is inherently flaky. Uh, but why? Right? Yes, network issues happen, but we should have retry policy in place. Did we retry? Like, uh, did we have the proper configuration? Uh, maybe we had timeout for five minutes. Um, so they shouldn't be flaky. And uh, when you have flakiness in your integration test, it's a good sign that you have a bug. Why don't we uh, debug them? Why don't we fix them? Because it's hard, right? Uh, the volume of these logs, these beautiful logs I showed a few slides uh, before, uh, is enormous. And those were grouped by the trace ID. Our logs in the CI system, well, if you have them, they, are, they could be terrible, right? So the time when you do integration testing is the best time to use observability to debug these tests and to actually Find the bugs in your retry policy. This is the worst bugs to have, right? It's very hard to uh, detect them. And effectively, uh, we, by adding the telemetry to libraries themselves, we help both. We help ourselves understand what, what our libraries do and fix the issues. And also help users at the same time. Okay, so. The next part is performance testing, right? So how our testing looked before open telemetry? Uh, well, effectively it's benchmarking, right? We get a little bit more data than this, but effectively we get a number. Okay, the throughput, this was your throughput. If there was a network issues during the test, um, we would see a regression, we would spend days investigating why it happened, but effectively the test is not valid in presence of normal cloud uh, or real life errors, right? We tend to isolate this test as much as possible. 
what changes with open telemetry? Well, of course we can do benchmarking, but it, it's kind of boring, right? We can do much more. So we can embrace these network issues. We can even simulate them. We can test our uh, libraries in, not in, the, in the realistic scenario, right? How users, in the same place users use them in imperfect world. Uh, and in order to do this, we need to apply some real load. We, want, we need to inject some failures and we need to run it for, for a while. And at this point, it becomes a service. And the uh, stress test or reliability test, it's just a service that you monitor similar, similarly to anything else. You enable the same observability you would want your users to enable. You can um, collect your, all the data that you want to um, and how it might look. Okay, we have the, I'm pretty sure you don't see it, but we have some beautiful dashboard for the test. It has all the boring stuff, the latency, error rate, uh, throughput. Uh, we have even more boring stuff, some CPU memory metrics um, and so on. But we, we have much more. It's just open telemetry, right? You go ahead and you um, look for traces. If you have continuous profiling enabled, it becomes even better. So I want to share some examples of, of things we were able to find um, with this uh, tests. Um, and they, uh, even though they rely on some basic metrics, the way to find them, detect them, and uh, solve them would not be possible without all the richness uh, of different signals we get with open telemetry. Uh, so the first one, okay, uh, we allocated buffers of excessive size. We could allocate the precise size, which is small, but we said, okay, we will always allocate one megabyte for this. Okay, what happens? We have high CPU, high memory, low throughput, lower than we expected. Um, we take memory dump, we see all these buffers, we fix it, we get much higher throughput. Um, it's all possible because we run it for a long time and compare easily. Um, then the other story is the thread pool size. You run your code, well, well our messaging libraries allow you to configure concurrency. Um, and the user can come and say, okay, I want 500 uh, thread, I want 500 messages processed in parallel. Um, but what happens if you don't configure your thread pool size accordingly, your concurrency is wasted. You don't have threads to, to accommodate this concurrency. Um, and you see low throughput, but also low resource utilization. You underutilize your stuff. You go, uh, in this case, check the number of threads. Boom, it scales linearly. Um, and this one is it, it's my favorite of all times. Um, it shows some uh, code. This is the fix that, uh, I don't know, reduces memory usage in, in thousand times. Uh, hard to imagine, but that's a great argument for people who say that all the problems come from network. Um, and your code just cannot do something so stupid. Well, it can. Um, <laughs> so um, there are multiple, there are two bugs here. Uh, but what happens? Uh, our messaging libraries allow you to prefetch stuff. So you process a batch of messages, and in parallel, they go to the broker, and they prefetch a few more. So then when you uh, come back and you finish processing, you get the next batch right away. You don't need to wait for it. OK, so you can reconfigure a 1,000 um, messages to be prefetched. We start the test. Memory grows exponentially. Boom, out of memory. Uh, we we'll look at the memory dump. And there are <laughs> four millions of these messages there. <laughs> okay, so one bug, it's on us. The second bug, well, it's also on us, but I, I want to blame this, this framework. So uh, what we see here is a reactor. Uh, it's my favorite framework of, on Earth. Um, what it does, it prefetches on behalf of you by default. So there is this uh, the, uh, comma zero thing on line 213 which disables the default prefetching um, stuff. OK, so um, with this, um, I want to summarize. So we're 
people who don't have observability thinks they know they think they know their code. They don't. <laughs> they just don't know. They don't have any evidence that they don't. Right? Uh, in, to actually uh, improve SDKs, we need to uh, embrace network issues. Right? So when we develop stuff, we rarely have any network problems. Uh, we don't have the scale in production which shows them. We are not exposed to them. So we need to make an extra effort to actually run our stuff in a real environment, uh, being exposed to this matrix, uh, to this uh, network issues. And we need the level of observability that helps us to debug these issues, to understand what happened. Were this test flaky because where it was very unfortunate, or our retry policy doesn't work correctly? Right? Um, and when we instrument libraries, uh, we end up, and we use this telemetry, we end up with the same telemetry as our users would need. Because um, it's, the volume is the same. We have enormous amount of tests running. We uh, have all this performance and reliability testing. If this telemetry doesn't answer the question, or if it's too verbose for us, it's most likely that it's also too verbose for our users and also doesn't answer their questions. Okay, that's it. Thank you for coming to my talk. Um, um. Uh, yeah, the user that you can work closely together who can provide detailed feedback is awesome. Um, but what I'm trying to say, you are this user, right? You can be your user zero. Uh, and with library instrumentations, the library owners, they, they tend to provide very deeply, very deep telemetry focused on their specific thing. Uh, and they need user feedback to actually create something that would be useful for, for end users. So I, I, I would say, yes, you should be your user zero, but you need user one, two, and three to actually correct the mistakes you've done <laughs> first, right? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, cool. So we tried to use Chaos Mesh. We got, a, um, no, I wouldn't say it's a success, uh, but it, allows to create some chaos. It's hard to control. It's, it's hard to do it in multiple directions. But it mostly, it's like you take the uh, something, you give it very little CPU memory quota, uh, and you try to load it as much as you can. When you see a bottleneck, you try to fix it and understand where it comes from. And even with this, by just running it at maximum capacity, you're exposing it to a lot of stuff. And by running it, let's say, for days, uh, you get just regular network issues. Um, what open telemetry is helpful is that after you run it for days, you can actually pinpoint the time and the problem, right? Without it, it wouldn't be possible.